Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hope After the Landslide. Gosh, it's been, it seems like so long since I've talked to some of you, and I know that it's so endearing to hear you say, gosh, Jackie, we've missed you, and that really makes my heart happy. See, but you need a break because what is the saying? Absence makes the heart grow fonder, I think is how it goes. So I am broadcasting live tonight from Bend, Oregon in a motel room. Uh, I am just uh, hours away from getting into my new home up here. So I'm just going to say thank you for your grace. And uh, we were trying to make sure we had a clear, uh, non-flashy broadcast with no pixels here. And I just have met this amazing, amazing new friend through unfortunate circumstances, but I have to say that the friends I meet through these groups and um, through the Grieving Moms Finding Hope have just been solid. And without further ado, this is my beautiful friend, Dina, that is on our um, 1030 uh, Standard Time group call that we do on Zoom every Monday. And Dina has been so willing to, and it's not been that long, that um, she lost her son and she was willing to share um, and some really amazing tools that she would like to have to help with you guys. So Dina, thank you so much for being here. And uh, we're just having a conversation, you guys together. And I always have to say, Dina and I are not professionals at this. And she's gonna probably tell you something funny that happened to her today to kind of start off her day and, but she's here anyways. <laughs> Hi, ladies. I'm so happy to be here. Um, you'll, well, actually, I'm not that happy to be here be, considering what brought me here, but I'm coming here. I'm happy to be here only from the standpoint that um, when I'm with you all, I know that I'm not alone. And this is um, something that none of us would, would want to be on. It's a very difficult uh, journey, but together we, um, we are all walking together and um, in our shoelaces tied together to help each other through this. Um, but today was kind of a stressful afternoon because I found out um, I live in Texas and we've got really bad soil. And I found out that my home is literally uh, being pulled in half. And it's bowing in the middle. And so uh, the man who came in, um, the engineer came in and explained to me that they're going to drill through um, my house and they're going to take out buckets of dirt um they're going to go down 25 feet and i was listening to all this and, and i said you know i was just really asking the lord that um uh that hopefully i would get some good material uh for my for my writing because i write a blog for all of you called grounded words and uh, he looked at me like i had two heads and i explained <laughs> to him that I, that I was hoping that the lord was going to give me um something about the foundation about having great foundation and and so hopefully there will be something there but truly um i i think that we can identify to that we can identify about um just feeling like we um are caving in like like our foundation has been pulled apart and um even being a woman of faith losing a child has you know shook me up like being in a snow globe it, it, the, the the questions that you ask the wondering if, if the lord is still with us um if he's there to get us through our real questions that we all struggle with and um and i'm here to say that the lord the lord is good and and he will bring you through it and he'll bring me through it and together we'll we'll make um we'll make this Amen. One day. It sounds like you've already got your blog started. I, I liked what all, already <laughs> the words that you were you were sharing with us came out. And I know that you can't wait to get off. And I believe your friend Tanya is on here. We're going to say hi to Tanya. She's saying Aww. hi to you. Thank you for being here, Tanya. I look forward to talking to you. So tell us about uh, the day of your land side. I'm sure. Um, I'm going to um, let me just kind of um, show you Grant. Uh, so this is Grant. Uh, this is my son. Um, Grant, Grant had just turned 18 years old, um, just a few weeks before, um, he, uh, had a, he had a fall into traffic. He stepped into traffic. Um, he was upset and he was on phone, uh, with his girlfriend. Um, they were struggling. My son had struggled with drug addiction for four and a half years and, um, he was very helpful that morning, um, but by the afternoon he had used Xanax 
and um, there was a misunderstanding. His uh, his death was labeled a suicide. Um, I've always felt deep in my heart that it was the drugs that um, were really pulling him down, and, th and that that was the source of his struggle on that particular day. And um, it was one that I I never really thought would come to pass. My son always told me that um, every mother, no matter what, whether they have a, a child um, on drugs, off drugs, doing great, not doing great, he always felt that every mom should be prepared for their child's passing because he said that we live in a day and time where, where it's just scary. And um, so, yeah. So saying that, you know, whenever people say, you know, that our children are not ours, they're, they're God's, and to say to surrender you know, our children over to God is so easy to say, but it's not easy. It's not easy to do and to be prepared to be able to say, yeah, we live in a day and a time to, to, get, to get ready for that. You can never, as you know, get ready for a day like that. No matter if you feel that it's like they're rocking on it back and forth every day. You know, we have a group called Hurting Moms Mending Hearts that, that do that. And they still have that hope, you know, that their child is gonna become, you know, they're gonna get better and they're not gonna be in that situation anymore. But now we're in a situation where we don't have hope anymore as far as like, we, our children are in heaven, they're gone. But the hope that we have is, of course, in the Lord. And Dina, I'm so sorry about that because, you know, the, the, you and I have that, not only that we lost a son, but also that our child was um, hit in, by oncoming traffic. And it's just that I'm sure the visions that come into your mind is that they have with me and how all of a sudden we have to take ourselves away from those thoughts and just picture them up in the arms of our heavenly father and that they're waiting for us. And that's what I usually do. And I'm sure that that's what you do too. Yes, it's very important. And I, I just really believe that um, the power of words and healing ourselves um, through words, through allowing ourselves to reframe our brain and to reprogram positive thinking, even when we're dealing in the most difficult situations is very, very important. Um, you know, the Bible has taught me so much from, from reading God's word. But in the early days of Grant's passing, I couldn't read anything. I, I felt just completely void. It was just so hard to comprehend. Um, so I started with the children's Bible. I got myself a nice little children's Bible. And I just went back to to the basics so I could read God's word. And what I, what I remember, something that was very important to me is I came um, to Romans 8.38. And um, when Grant actually um, fell into the traffic, I received a knock at the door and it was 8.38 when that knock came through because I was taking a bath. And in the weeks that preceded that, um, 838 kept coming through in text messages and different thing and things. And I said, Lord, you know, what is this about? And um, it just dawned on me that the last time I was in God's word, it was reading Romans 828. And if you go down to Romans 838, the Lord promises that he's going to be with us in everything through the mm. angels and in death. And it was just... Um, it was the reassurance that I needed to know in that moment that God had not forsaken me and he has not forsaken you. And he mm -hmm. is pulling us through this situation. And while I would have never planned for all three of us to be at Grant's accident scene because we all um, were there, um, but in a odd way we were all being prayed for one of my best girlfriends she prayed for me she got me at the house oh my son's um best friend's sister was his first responder and she sat with him and prayed with him after the paramedics came and then a man was walking uh, his dog and he prayed with my husband and you know just to think about that even though this was a tragedy but to think about the fact that the Lord had assigned all of those people and then yeah, he yeah. gave me 838. It really is a miracle. Wow. wow. I didn't, I didn't that so, so, with us. Yeah, yeah, the the angels that all of a sudden it's just amazing. Let me turn my volume because I'm getting a little okay. feedback. 
I want to uh, to say hi to Margie and to Jafina. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Jafina, to Darla. Thank you guys for being here. You guys are so dedicated. I love that um, you continue to follow us. And I'm so humbled by having Dina here because I know, Dina, you want to tell them uh, how long ago that it was. Um, yes, um, my son passed away on, um, his accident was March 14th, um, 2017. And um, so it's been just over a year and six months. And um, in, in the w words of my grief counselor, it, it's, a, it's a little less worse, um, but some days bring on grief, you know, uh, believe it or not, I was standing here, um, you know, starting to have grief burst over what was happening with my house being pulled in half. And, um, and, the, and the, the man who was uh, doing it, he said, I don't know what to tell you, but I'll tell you about paranormal activity. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, that wasn't really what I expected. But, um, you know, I, people try their but best. But you came back with a really good response. <laughs> right? You said, well, I have faith in the Bible. I think, isn't that what you said you That's told him? Right. I told him that. Yes. And that was a witness. I mean, so even in the midst of this, I think it's just amazing that, you know, you, we talked on our group yesterday about, you know, being a very lit, a dim lit candle in a, in a very dark room to other people. And we have moms that are on here that, you know, are definitely angry. And, you know, I think you even shared, it's like, like sometimes like when you're, when your your face is out on the public, you're going to take a lot of hits from, from being in the limelight and, and I just know that it's just because we're so angry because we're hurting so bad. And I just want to say to each and every one of you, I don't, it's okay. It's okay. Like, I don't take anything you guys are saying personally. I'm sorry for your pain because I understand because I'm sure that I lashed out at somebody too. And um, Dina has been really good at comforting me in those moments of like, gosh, if they only knew me, if they, you know, it's like misunderstanding me. And uh, but our group has just been, how many times we've we been together? It's only been like, it'll be four next week, right? Yes. So basically a month we've spent together and I've just loved already seeing the connections that are happening together. And and it's, so, we had a lot of ladies in Texas and I learned how to say y'all a little bit better than I did say it before because it's a lot quicker, right? Lots of quicker to say y'all. So, so Dina, I know, and let me take a break. So, uh, Jafina said, my son passed on March 11, 2018. That was the same month that just obviously just so not very long ago, Jafina. I'm sorry about that. And Selena, I hope that's also right. Yes, thank you for putting where you're um, viewing from. She's from Ventura. So, if you want to, and hi, Denise is on here. Nice to see you. Uh, but yeah, put on there you know, where you're viewing from. Um, and, and then let's come back to Dina. You wanted to share some tools yes. that um, has really helped your family. Yeah, I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, so our family, um, so I've, I've got some things here. So um, this is my family. So um, my husband, uh, my son, myself, and my daughter. My daughter um, will be 12 years old this year. Her name is Ella. Um, Casey's my husband and me and Grant, and um, this is actually um, this is actually the bench that Grant will um, state that his urn will be in. Um, my, uh, mm. my parents um, purchased a, a lovely plot, and um, you just never know um, where your life is taking. So, uh, so when we had this picture taken, um, we were actually sitting on the bench that is where Grant's urn will go. And um, so my motivation for wellness is truly been um, for my daughter's sake. I, um, I believe that, that um, it's very easy to have an emotional death in all of this where you just want to check out completely. And there are those days that it is difficult, especially in those first few weeks. You don't know. I mean, you can't even find your bra. I mean, I couldn't <laughs> find anything. And, um, you know, I, I just love you. <laughs> I really struggled, you know, just uh, just with basic tasks and, um, you know, much less um, trying to 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 pull it together to be there for Ella. But this was this is my son and Ella. And um, there was eight years difference, but they were they were incredibly close. And so. Um, Ella and I visited, and she's going to come here to just say a quick. Um, oh, we want to see your beautiful face, Ella. 
Come here. Come on, Ella. Don't be shy. Your mom's doing it all by herself. Oh, hi, sweetie. This Thank you. I love you. And, um, <laughs> and so Ella joined a grieving kids group in the Metroplex. And in that grieving kids book group, um, they explained to us that children thrive with creative projects. And so we took it upon ourselves to start doing some fun creative projects in order to keep the spirit of Grant alive. And yes, there's times that looking at the photos and doing these creative projects make us cry, but it also keeps the spirit of my son alive. And so that's what I want to share with all of you. Aww. Okay, thank so you for thank you for sitting with your mom. She likes the yeah. support. Ella. <laughs> uh, so this is this is a, a really neat project that we did. This is a table runner, and it has eyeballs on it. And our son loved to do funny uh, faces, and so his friends still visit us all the time. And we got out the pens, and we had them drawn this and it was just trying to keep some fun alive even though it we were feeling pretty crappy um, that's awesome that's one project um you can go and um and then ella you, and have, a couple, ella, you have a couple of the moms that are saying that it's really sweet that you're that you're sitting there next to your mom so look at oh. that <laughs> I, and then here is another um let me show you a couple other things so um, we have coffee cups and here is my a piece of artwork that my daughter made and here's a piece of artwork that my son made and my mother-in-law had these made into coffee cups. So is that you just sent that to like um, uh, Shutterfly or one of those types of websites? That, yeah. And then my son's favorite artist was Dale Tahuli. And I really wanted to do something for his friends. And um, I wanted to be able to allow them the opportunity to mourn as well as with my family. So in reading Alan Wolfelt's book, I learned about the difference between grieving and mourning. And grief is internal and mourning is the external expression of your grief. And so, um, if you don't address this mourning process, Alan was explaining that what happens is that you can actually get sick, you can have anxiety, and I certainly didn't want to have any more anxiety than what I was already experiencing. And so um, this was one of my first grieving projects. So I found this artist and I called him up and I sent him off my son's ashes. And then I asked my son's friends if they wanted to purchase either a heart, a blob, or a cross for a very small fee. I explained to him I wasn't making any profit on it, but um, it was really special. And then all the kids came over, and um, it was just a really special time that we got to have with them. Wow, I'm going to have some of the the moms are going to ask you, um, like how where you can do it. Maybe you can put a link or something yes. on there. While you're getting something else, I want to say hi to Andrea. Hi, sweet Andrea. I already miss you guys. This is my girls down there in Lake Forest, California, and I know that um, Selena is saying, uh, "Listen to you both reminds me I'm not alone. Brings me comfort." My six year old passed on February 27, 2018. She's from San Pedro. Thank you for being here, and I'm so sorry. Um, and then also, uh, Colleen was asking how old your son was again, because she lost her six months ago. Uh, oh, Grant had just turned 18. That's what I thought. Okay. okay. So this is kind of a kooky thing, um, but I don't, I don't, I don't worry what other people think of me. This is a little weird, but it really felt, it really felt normal. So this is an angel cage. And, um, so if you can Aww. see it, his pictures in there, there's angels. I've got angels all over oh. this. And it. I wanted to make an angel cage because I wanted to remember that my son is healed. He's in heaven and he is with the angels. And when I feel sad, I look oh, at the angel wow. cage. And yes, I'm sure this looks really a little strange to some people that haven't gone through grief. But to me, it brings me comfort. So there's oh, my angel. Oh, I don't know. That is so not quirky. Or that, I, that is beautiful. 
And then something that was important that my daughter made, this is called the question of the day plate. And this was a tradition that we had in our family when Grant was alive. And something that after he passed, we were no longer doing the question of the day and it made her really sad. So in her grieving group, which is called the Journey of Hope, it's a nonprofit, um, they actually made these and we got to do this last year. And that's kind of what spiraled all of these ideas was to start expressing our grief um, in healthy so ways. Out in a morning situation, so you have actually hands on to do something and making it in a form of art and, and it comes out in all different ways because everybody's yes. got different perceptions. And then my and husband love. made this one. I don't know if you can see it. It says, mom, wow. Mom, wow. And he oh. just thought it was really special. He gave it to me on Mother's Day. He wanted me to have that. And then this is a lot of people wear these. This is one of those little urns with your child's ashes in it. But it, it means a lot to me. And I, I wear it when I am writing. Um, and uh, here is, this is the name of my blog. It's Grounded Works for uh, grounding, grounded Works is the name of the blog, and I write a prayer and a share, and I post most Fridays at around 5 p.m., but once in a while, it's 6 or sometimes it's 7, and if you I don't hear. post, it's just because I've had real life and something's come up. You well, know, that's a beautiful way to put that, Dina, because you're right, because there's times where, you know, I've been out on the road, and, and I can't get out, you know, hope at sunrise, and by the way, Okay, so it's just now putting it together. I'm a little slow. So grounded words, and now they're coming in to your home because your house is splitting. <laughs> yeah, right? I was thinking about that too. How weird is that? Oh, my goodness. Um, so I'm going to show you my angels. Um, the, oddly, the day before um, Grant passed, I had really received a lot of insight in my prayer time, and I just really felt that it, the Lord was calling me into painting these earth angels. I didn't realize though that I would have so many earth angels that would come by my side. And you call your people your search and rescue. I call my people my earth angels. So I wanted to your name. <laughs> I wanted to make these little earth angels. So um, Ella has helped me color some of them. And I I um, make these up and I hand them out. And sometimes if I have somebody that's come to my door, like I had a, an orphan man came and he was so sad and he was sharing all about his passing of all of his relatives. So he got one too. <laughs> I just needed it. I just had to do something. I felt so bad. I, I felt like he needed to have something. You special. know, and I want to, and I want to address something because I know that because I, I know my mom is out there because I, I can, I tend to, I tend to be one, which is some of us say, I have not one creative bone in my body, but I just got to tell you that I have found that everybody does have a, something in them that does have creativity. And especially in the grieving process, because I, I painted something that I just literally was like, you know, they said, well, how do, how do you feel? It's just like use red paint. And then what does it make you think of? Or what color do you think of when you think about your son? And then it was blue paint. And, and then all of a sudden, before you know, I had this like, this artistic piece. So if you, if you don't, if you remove the boundaries from and take away, like you said, those negative thoughts of saying, I can't do this, or I, I, I like, I can't heal, or I'm not artistic, or I'll never make it through this day. That's what's going to happen. Right, Dina. So right. you can't be artistic. And kind of the idea with us with a lot of these was to do something to incorporate Ella into the process. So I made these coloring sheets. Uh, this is a coloring sheet. I realize my son is not an angel, but I, it's cute. Um, so here is uh, the little skateboard. He was a skateboarder. And um, his cat Coco is in here because cat Coco actually joined him six days later. So she um, she passed away. And, um it was just a really strange thing, um, but, he, but comforting because he loved his cat. And when Grant's friends come and visit me, sometimes it's just nice to have an activity to do with them and with Ella's friends. So we all colored these little coloring sheets. Um, that might be a nice thing that you could do. If it, and it doesn't have to look um, professional. I am a trained professional artist, but it doesn't have to be. <laughs> 
You ladies, I'm giving you permission to do stick figures. It, while, again, while Dina's pulling out some beautiful other project, I, I want to mention that again, I am so blessed to be able to know Dina and I don't know that I could ever uh, mirror what she's doing, but that's okay. We have different gifts, but I am so thankful that she took the initiative to say, I want to be with other moms. And so she's been with us on our morning zoom call time because that we do online and i i am now a firm believer in these groups online because they i can't tell you how much they have warmed my heart and it could make me cry because um they've allowed me to just be you always hear me say to just be and um so dean i'm i'm so glad that you're part of a group because you are a breath of fresh air you really are well it, it really has been a blessing and, and you know oh, my husband and i um no, we have a real marriage. We don't always get along. And we had gone to a, um, a grieving group. And rather than coming back and having just a great time, uh, we came back and we had a little bit of a discussion on the way home. And uh, he informed me that he thought I should go join a um, grieving moms group. Uh, because apparently maybe I was sharing a little bit too much about mom topics. And he didn't think the men could relate. And I'm so glad for that article argument or discussion because we really um, we really talked about it later and he was absolutely right because I really did need to have moms walking in my shoes and not just in a Facebook support group but really mothers um, that can walk walk by me in this I have a, a, a few wonderful mothers here in the area but it's nice to have the consistency of that call yeah. And, yeah. Uh, do you have time for a cup for one more, a couple more? Are we okay? Yeah, uh, we we've got time for one more. I think so. Yes. Okay. So this is a really this is very simple. I mean, really, everybody can do this one. So you get your child's. Uh, I'm not, I'm not believe in that so far. It looks pretty. This is really simple. You get your child's favorite sweatshirt, and you go to Walmart. You get a five dollar form pillow form, and you just tie it over a pillow. And that I this, can do. this came about because my daughter wanted to have something to snuggle with and she just missed her brother so much and she was just having just a really tough time and I just couldn't think about what to do and I don't sew <laughs> so I went upstairs and I was like oh lord please help me and I and I thought gosh and she wanted to carry it all the time and my son had very outlandish clothing. So this is the only one that matched my downstairs decor. And I thought that'll work. I'll put it on my sofa and it will match. The <laughs> okay. So ladies, if you hear that there is no, Dina doesn't know how to sew. Cause I was thinking she probably even spins wool or something, but she doesn't sew. She doesn't spin wool. All she did was go to Walmart or target or someplace and get just a, like a form pillow, basically. And she tied, not sewed, she tied this shirt around the pillow. I think that is a beautiful thing. Really, really good idea. Yeah. And then I just have one, one, um, one more thing. Um, so my daughter, um, you know, we've been we've been told by professional counselors to really allow her to um, to lead us. Um, sometimes we want to lead our children. Um, but with young children, sometimes they know what their needs are. And I've always allowed her to just be very open with us about, you know, talking about Grant. And so this weekend she found this little book and it says, I wrote a book about you. And I, mm -hmm. and she was looking at this and I said, well, t tell me about what you're interested in. She said, I really want to have this book. And I said, well, well tell me what this means. So she, the book, book says, Dear Family, I wrote a book about you, but you helped a lot because you're you. I obviously had some great material to work with. And it just goes on to talk about the family. And she rewrote the book so that this would be our family book. And she said, I'm going to write this book and I'm going to put in here the answers that I know that Grant Hmm. answer and she said because we might not have him with us but we're still a family and that's what I really want to drive home tonight you might not have your children with you but don't let that make you feel like you can't still be a family you know my son he might not be at the table with us but we talk about him 
we we talk about the funny times. We try to um, keep the spirit alive of who he was because he was a hilarious person. And, uh -huh. you know, for his birthday, my husband bought these wind up toys and um, we 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 passed out all these little wind up toys to all of his friends. And, you know, oh. yes, that might seem strange to somebody no. that, that hasn't lost a child. But you know what? Look at this one. This is a cop. This is a cockroach. It's oh, a cockroach. My goodness. Where did you get all those wind up toys? Oh, I've got more. He had to order like two cases um, in order. <laughs> my brother gave us the idea and then we just ran with it. And so whenever my son's friends come over, they get a wind up toy because as much as my son, um, you know, my son, I'm sure he knows that we're sad, but he would want us to be happy. And not only does my son want us to be happy, my heavenly father, your heavenly father, he wants us to have joy. Our father in heaven, he wants us to, to laugh again. He doesn't want the grief to keep away our joy. And whatever is in your heart that you feel tonight is holding you back from that joy. I am just going to tell you right now, go ahead. And if it seems like a little crazy, it's your grief. No, there's no rules about what your grief needs to be. And yes, this is crazy, but my son, he was not normal. And I mean that in a good way. He was yeah. a very kind of crazy guy and this kept keeps the spirit alive. And so, I have a big bowl of these toys in my. Uh, I hope you're going to send me the cockroach. That of all those, I think I just want the cockroach. <laughs> and then uh, we have these. My husband made this blanket, and it's just beautiful. And it has all of our photos on it. Oh gosh! Wow! And it's just a beautiful blanket. And when we travel, we take this blanket with us. Here's our son. Um, wow. And then my mother made me a blanket as well. And then I have these little twinkle lights that I put in my office and I hang photos. And then my husband, he made this. Um, this is just our initials. And he just felt like it was really important that, um, that we stay unified as a family, that we do not let the enemy pull us down because the enemy wants to take a death and the enemy, the adversary wants to pull us apart. And you know what, ladies, we need to bind ourselves up. Yep. Your child may be missing, but you are still a family. You might not be the type of operational family, but your child was part of your family. Your child's still in that family. And the memory and the spirit of who they were needs to stay alive in your hearts. I believe that completely. Well said. You know, I think that if I were to just to take this entire beautiful time with you, Dina, I would say that you guys are a poster family of how that it needs to be done. And I know that not everybody um, has, you know, the, the beautiful dynamics, you know, some people have um, a husband that has grieving a different way and has left and um, our faith may be wavering and all those things, but you guys are doing it the right way. And that's why that, you know, you're still going to cry. Your family cries probably once every day. Something triggers you. But at the end of the day, you guys have a good, like, positive outlook that God wants you to have, and you're going to be okay. Everything that you have done has been so um, contagious to each one of these moms out there. And I know, like I said, they're going to be asking you if you want to put, like, links up. And, and, I, and I think that I could probably confidently say, that, ladies, that Dina will go back on some of the comments, and she can answer some of those that... Um, we didn't address tonight. And then I know there'll be people watching later on that on the not live and to be able to come back on there. But they're saying to say thank you for your strength and they love your ideas and they love your courage. And by the way, we thank you to your husband, Corey, for coming on and helping you with the technology in the background. And I, I am, I am encouraged as well. Honestly, I'm, I'm encouraged as well. So in addition to, you know, doing all these amazing things that you're doing internally, your husband said it well, which was that, you know, you need to have other moms to grieve with because, you know, 
but we are different and we do like to go a little bit deeper than some of the guys. And there's a safe place for Dina and for all of us to be able to do that when we get together in our Grieving Moms group. And if you do want information on that, it's there's a link there at the top. But I can say that um, time after time, I have nobody in these things that has regretted that because I certainly don't regret so certainly don't, don't regret having you in this group. And I so look forward to meeting your other friends that I haven't gotten a chance to, to talk to. So Dina, thank you so, so much. Mm-hmm. You, I, I wish I could hug you like right through here because you're awesome. You're well, awesome. I feel the same way about all of you. And you know, I by no means am, am any sort of, nobody would ever want to be a grieving expert. None of, we're all in this together. Uh, we have my family, we, we, you know, we, we blow up at each other. We have a lot of moments. There's, you know, it's been a really tough road. And I think that's when we just have to give ourselves a lot of grace and what works for me, you know, may not work for you, but it's been something that has just helped me express myself. Um, because my daughter has needed these projects in order to, um, to still keep the fun alive in our family. So thank you so much for having me here tonight. Well, and thank you to your, to, for Ella to be there. She's going to be a very healthy girl. And I think she's got a really good role model there with her mom that writes and is staying creative. And, and it's so lovely because I love to color and I wish I had like a little girl to color with. Sometimes I want to take out and nothing you mentioned, Dina is out of source because you said it too. It is your grief. You need to do what serves you well that's helping you with your coping mechanisms and things that are healthy for you, right? So you're doing it all very well. And by the way, I wanna say how to quickly before we're gonna go is to hi to Michelle, my dear friend, Michelle, that's in my Lake Forest group also, and to Janie and to Kathy Taylor from Hurting Moms, Mending Hearts, um, and and Juanita, I didn't get to say hi to you. So you guys, thank you for being here. Um, and thank you to all those who are gonna be watching after. Dina, it's been a pleasure. I love you so, so much. And uh, God bless you and your family, okay? Okay. Take care. Good night.